please be sure to give it to me. And when I send out our newsletter, I'll be more than happy to send you one. And it'll have all the information on there for you. Uh, also, um, our next service is going to be Saturday. It's our Saturday service, and we have a meal afterwards. And so you're welcome to come at 5 o'clock this Saturday. And I'm working on a newsletter to get out the first of next month. And I appreciate if anybody has anything that I need to put in the newsletter, please get it to me by Saturday. I appreciate that. Okay, is there anybody that has a specific need that they would like us to remember and pray for anyone? Amen. Everybody's blessed and highly favored. Well, I have some. Uh, yeah, I've got them. Uh, Grace Parsons, she uh, fractured, broke her shoulder in three places, and uh, we need to remember her. She won't be able to get uh, therapy until she gets back home in a few weeks. So uh, they just told her, don't use it, don't move it at all. She showed me the x-rays, but it's still, what is that? Somehow or another, it is. She, one of the bones here has shifted out of place. And so, uh, it, if it goes the wrong way, it can really cause her a lot more problems. And But the good thing is, it doesn't require surgery. So we thank the Lord for that. It could have been a whole lot worse. Uh, she tripped and fell. and. Uh, uh, remember a lady named Christina and Sharon um, and April and Josh Best and Lou and Tony and Alfred. Uh, Beth said that they found a place for Alfred uh, to stay. So we we'll praise God that that prayer has been answered. And remember a lady, Pat Stansberry, her husband just passed away here not long ago. And so she really needs mm -hmm. prayer. Uh, Pop and Brenda, Jeffrey and Sh Sherry, as he was mentioning, Sherry's the mom, and Jeffrey is her son. He needs a, a kidney transplant. Yeah. And so he's been on that list for yeah, quite, quite, quite a while. Yeah. And so uh, we need really ask God, if the Lord lead you to remember them in prayer, and she needs a job. She's out of work mm -hmm. now. so. Uh, that's uh, really something they need uh, right now. And so let's just go to bow our heads and go to the other uh, Lord. Uh, Lord, we just come to you uh, right now, for we uh, know you are the great physician, Father God. Uh, every you are every so need that we God. have here right now, uh, Father God. Uh, Even uh, ones that are in the hearts of your people uh, that were not life. mentioned. Uh, we bring them before uh, you uh, right uh, now, Almighty uh, God, uh, for we know that you can. Touch these lives of your people, Father God. We praise you right now that you will do things that will blow our minds, that they will have a mighty report, and they will give you praise and glory, Father God, and what you've done in their lives, Father God. Lord, we just thank you for each and every one, Father God. We know you have a divine time and place, Father God. We just thank you right now for doing it, Father God, that you'll move in each and every one of these the way you see fit, Father God. And, and we just move. praise you, and we just Hallelujah. thank you right Hallelujah. now, Father God. Thank and you, I Jesus. even lift up our Lord. guest speaker tonight, oh, Father yes, God, that you would him. move upon Hallelujah. him, Father yes. God, Hallelujah. that your will and your way thank would flow you, through him thank right you, now, Jesus. Father God, and that oh, we yes, will receive yes, your God, word and truth and in life. Hallelujah. We just praise you and we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise Jesus. So may try to slay me, stop my praise and make me hang my heart upon a willow tree. But I know silence is rebellion, and the dead praise not the Lord. So I put on my priestly ephod, begin to dance and praise the Lord. Cause I'm living in a place called praise Judah is a land where I dwell Even when I'm in a tomb I 
give all praise and to him in a place called praise. I'm living in a place called praise. Judah is a land where I dwell. Even when I'm in a tulip, I give all praise and to him in a place called praise. So they try to slay me. Stop my praise and make me hang my harp upon a willow tree. But I know silence is rebellion, and the dead praise not the Lord. So I put on my priestly ephod, begin to dance and praise the Lord. Living in a place called praise, Judah is a land where I dwell. Even when I'm in a tulip, I give all praise and to him in a place called praise. Said I'm living in a place called praise. Judah is a land where I dwell. Even when I'm in a tulip, I give all praise and to him in a place called praise. Darkness may surround me. But the promise that he gave me Is greater than the spear in Saul's hand Prophesy, see this current situation Must have prophetic declaration So I put on my priestly ephod Began to dance and praise the Lord Cause I'm living in a place called praise Judah is a land where even when I'm in a tomb, I give all praise and to him in a place called praise. Said I'm living in a place called praise. Judah is a land where I dwell. Even when I'm in a tomb, I give all praise and to him in a place called praise. Darkness may surround me. But the promise that he gave me Is greater than the spear in Saul's hand You see our current situation Must have prophetic declaration So I put on my priestly ephod Begin to dance and praise the Lord oh, Cause I'm living in a place called praise Judah is a land where I dwell Even when I'm in a tulip I give all praise and to him in a place called praise Even when I'm in a tulip I give all praise and to him in a place called praise Even when I'm in a tulip Even when I'm in a tulip even when I'm in a duel, I'm in a place called praise. Hallelujah. I love that part. Darkness may surround me. Hallelujah. How many have been given some promises? And the word tells us his promises are yea and amen. I'm seeing if you're with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And those promises are greater than anything the enemy can throw at you. Darkness may surround me, but the promise that he gave me is greater than the spear in Saul's hand. You see this current situation. Hallelujah. Sometimes, Josh, we just need to prophesy. And sometimes prophecy isn't necessarily God speaking a word to you. But see, if we're created in the very likeness and image of God, hallelujah, and His word is in us, then we have the word and the power, hallelujah, to be able to create and speak into situations and circumstances so we can begin to speak the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And make a prophetic declaration. Hallelujah. That things are going to start to change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That your situation. Hallelujah. Is nothing more than a divine setup for God to move you. 
from the place you're in to the place you're going. Amen. Hallelujah. And it is a good place. Hallelujah. Amen. Darkness may surround me, but the promise that he gave me is greater than the spear in Saul's hand. And my current situation must have a prophetic declaration. So I put on my priestly ephod. See, even our worship begins to prophesy. Hallelujah, because it changes the atmosphere. Hallelujah, it changes, hallelujah, our, our mind. The Word says and tells us that so a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yes. But, and, and you know, we confuse that mind and heart. And the Word also says that let this same mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So if we had the mind of Christ, we realize that our situations aren't meant to harm us, but rather prosper us. Amen. Hallelujah. And I ain't talking about money either, but he can do that too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see this current situation must have a prophetic declaration. So I put on my priestly ephod, began to dance and praise the Lord. Cause I'm living in a place called praise. Judah is the land where I dwell. Even when I'm in a tomb, I give all praise and tomb in a place called praise. Said I'm living in a place called praise. Judah is the land where I dwell. Even when I'm in a tomb, I give all praise and tomb in a place called praise. Even when I'm in a doolong, give all praise unto him in a place called praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lift your name up, God. We worship you tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Have your way in this service tonight, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to stir in this room, God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Stir up the gift in each and every one of us, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stir up the gift of prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us flow as one tonight, God. Hallelujah. Let us lay everything at your feet tonight, God. Hallelujah. Only to hear your voice, God. And see you face to face, God. And to be known as we are known, God. Hallelujah, Jesus.
of a song Johnny Cash didn't write it but he in this song he uh, recorded he said that he was reduced to nothing hallelujah 
that God might be everything. That's what I heard him saying. And in this place, we facilitate. That's all we do. Just facilitate the move of God. Hallelujah. And make ourselves available. Hallelujah. In the atmosphere of worship for God to say, hallelujah, whatever He desires to say to His people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This isn't about a man's religion or a man's doctrine. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is about a pure place in God, in the Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not about anything but Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Hallelujah. Being quickened in these mortal bodies and this immortal putting on the immortal. Yes. Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Laying everything aside. Yes. Hallelujah. For the appearing of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. People looking for him everywhere and he just wants to appear in your midst. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. In the garden, he walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There was a midst, hallelujah. Then he was there in their midst, hallelujah. Hallelujah, and he is here now. Hallelujah, all these things have been established in Christ from the very beginning. Hallelujah, and we're being awakened and quickened in him. Hallelujah, and his mind is being put in us. He has crucified us at the hill of Golgotha. Hallelujah, we died with him and we raised with him and we reign with him and we rule with him. Hallelujah, and we submit ourselves to him. Christ, the head of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, and we worship you. Jesus thank for that you, God Father. we worship you and we thank you for that truth Jesus, Jesus. Yes. hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah Father you call me out upon the waters the great unknown where feed me and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name and keep Your sovereign hands will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start Hey. 
in the presence of your Savior, and I will call upon your name, and keep my eyes above the waves, for in oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I And you are mine. I am yours. And you are mine. I am yours. And you are mine. to share one part is you know I've been singing this song and you know I told myself I'm not going to say nothing because I don't want to say nothing I'm just going to sing the song but everything that Darren has talked about today today and everything I've been hearing all week is just is confirmation and the thing that that I get from everything that's being said is you know mental health is a huge thing um, in the last decade, last 20 years, is so huge. Um, what we know about it, the science of it, and how much you know we've learned about it, and how much is being done about it now more than ever. And you know, the world gives you these pills to take. The world sends you to these therapists, and it's wonderful. And I, it's it's wonderful, and I've used it. But we know what the healing, you know, we know where the healing lies. We know where the healing lies, and the the one thing that I take from it is. Healing lies when you're in the present moment, when you're not thinking about the past, when you're not thinking about the future. That's where peace lies. That's where God lies. 
God is not in the past and not in the future. He's right now. Amen. And everything is incorporated in the right now. And that's all that you need just to hug you. The right now. The Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders to just breathe the moment and be in the now. I don't have to worry about the future because Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. I don't have to think about it. Let me walk upon the waters, and the right now is where the waters are. And I don't, you know, it don't make sense to me to say out loud, but my soul felt something with that. And I think it's something that everybody has to learn to take care of their mental, to take care of the mental by reading the Bible, take care of the mental by singing the song and listening to these words and living by these words. And that's where I'm at in my life. Just being in the now and not worrying about the past and not worrying about the future. Even if I'm walking on water and that looks a little bit scary, I won't know borders around my faith. That's all. Just being in the present moment is all I took from it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel in my spirit. I know we do these two songs a lot, but I, I want to send these uh, these two worship songs out to Mama Brenda. Hallelujah. I'm even feeling, uh, you know, it's not just because I think of Mary often, Ed. Hallelujah. I love Mama Mary. She's just a precious gem also. Hallelujah. And I don't know what's going on in her life, but hallelujah. Jesus knows. And I believe that we can send a word to the body. Hallelujah. And that word can go beyond these four walls. Yes. I also want to send this word to Diane Campbell. Hallelujah. Minister to her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Minister life and strength and peace and health. Healing wings. Give us to fly and sons of right, just as the rise and from. Healing wings, give us your fly, and signs of right, just as a rise, rise, and from our earth, shine.
Change me, Lord, I pray, into your image, more each day. Hallelujah, Uncle Al. Change me, Lord, into your image. Mary Green, rearrange the storm. Dying cause us to grow. From glory to glory, oh From glory to glory. From glory to glory. Change me, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us lift our hands and just receive healing for someone right now. Hallelujah. We lift up the body of Christ right now, Jesus. Every hurting heart, every need. Hallelujah. We bring them before you, God. Hallelujah. Get somebody in your mind's eye. Just begin to lift them up. Hallelujah. touch Pat Stansberry right now. Hallelujah. Let her know that there's a body standing with her. Hallelujah. That she is not alone. Though she's lost a lot. Hallelujah. Though they have gone physically, Kevin and Bill are standing in the spirit. Hallelujah. With her. They have taken their place with that great cloud of witnesses. And those who have gone on to the other side, I even see Miss Jenny and and, and Charlotte Taranjo and my grandmother and, and so many others who have crossed over and they're urging us onward to victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Last time. Healing wings. Give us your fly. Sing it, church. right now hallelujah and we believe and we send the word of the lord to you 
Hallelujah. God's going to begin to move in this situation. Hallelujah. In this petition that you've made before God. Hallelujah. And His people. Hallelujah. We lift you up, sister. Hallelujah. And we believe and know without a doubt God is going to begin to cause a miracle to happen in this situation. Hallelujah. And I look forward to your testimony. Hallelujah. Because God sees your heart. Hallelujah. And Jesus heals because He's moved with compassion. Yes. And we, when we are compassionate one for another, yes. hallelujah, that causes the heart of God to begin to, hallelujah, begin to move in healing. Hallelujah. And Father's going to begin to heal. Hallelujah. And reconcile. Hallelujah. And make a way where there seems to be no yes. way. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Hallelujah. And move, move, move. Hallelujah. In their life right now, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name. Let's stretch our hands toward Josh Quinn. Father God, we honor this man of God. This vessel, hallelujah, chosen, called for this very day and hour. Hallelujah, handpicked, hallelujah, straight out of your womb, God. Hallelujah, we know that the word has been planted in him before the foundations of the world were even laid, God. You had put inside of him a mandate to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. To preach the kingdom. Hallelujah. To preach reconciliation and restoration. Hallelujah. And restitution. Hallelujah. And life and grace and finished work, God. You've put all this in Him, God, for such a time as this. And we know that it's not by mistake that He is here with us tonight, God. You've brought Him here to edify this body, to speak into our lives. Hallelujah. And let us speak into His life, God. Hallelujah. As he begins to bring a word, God, begin to bring increase in your body. Begin to bring increase in him, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The things that are going on in his personal life, God, we know that you have already went before him. Hallelujah. And you've planned his path, God. Hallelujah. And you have a place for him to go, a place for him to obtain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you have laid up for him finances so that he can go and preach Christ to the entire world God we believe this and we receive this and we get behind this man of God and we support him in every way Jesus hallelujah 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 let's just stretch our hands and bless him we bless you Josh tonight we bless you we bless you, son, the Father says. We bless you this day and hour. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing one more little chorus before Joshua comes. And I want him, and I know this body here does, we want him to take his liberty and we want Him to take His time. Just as we have in worship. Hallelujah. We don't rush God here. Hallelujah. We don't put God in our religious box and say, God, you got to move in this amount of time. That's not to say that people don't have things that they need to do. Hallelujah. But the Word goes beyond space and time. Hallelujah. And we give you that time tonight, brother. And I just want to sing this to you. Hallelujah. Eyes can see the way you hold me. And how I'm hidden in your heart. You'll love this part. Minds don't know what I'll You've told me And how we linger where you are It's invisible 
to the world so incredible to the angels and not since Eden have they seen this sight everlasting life everlasting life you are all over and you are all around and you are inside this is life you are all over and you are all around and you are inside this is life Everlasting life, everlasting life. I came in empty, I didn't feel. I'm bringing my sickness and I'll be healed. Broken hearted. This is life. You are all over, and you are all around, and you are inside. This is life, everlasting life. Hallelujah! 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 Don't let this presence go. Hallelujah. Let's stay in this vein. Just because we transition from worship to word doesn't mean the atmosphere has to change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship is a preparing and a tilling of the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we might receive the word or the seed of God. Hallelujah. And that word goes into fertile, prepared ground. That's what worship is. It prepares us to receive the word of the Lord. And I want us to give a great big God bless you and welcome welcome to Brother Josh Quinn. Amen. Come on, Josh. It's so good to be here with you. And I honor uh, Darren and Dana for the work here and, and all of you, each and every one. There's not, not one that doesn't have a part and a place in what God's doing today. It doesn't have anything to do with the outer man. Thank God. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. If, uh, if it was dependent on that, I believe all of us would be disqualified. <laughs> They'd be looking for, you know, the, the Hollywood types and all those. But God uses what men discount. Right. Yes. He uses the weak things. And I don't have any problem. I tell my wife all the time. I, can I be real honest with you tonight? Let me, yes. Let me, I don't, you know, I think we're past the time of facades, don't you? Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. What, what, what is there a point of trying to trying to show off or be something that we're not. Amen. Amen. I think if we're real with one another and if we can be really just like what you said, brother, what you told me earlier, just transparent. Transparent, yes. And because what do any of us have other than a limited amount of time here unless the Lord brings a change? Absolutely. The Lord is showing us day by day that this life is like a breath. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. 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 And And... Let me, I'm going to, I'm going to read some scripture here that I really felt the Lord put on my heart. And I'm going to start off with the negative. 
<laughs> you know what I found out in this last year? I found out negative news, it sells. <laughs> it attracts. It, it, it really gets people's attention. I never was one into, uh, even, even when I wasn't walking real close with the Lord, which was many years ago now, in my very young age. And for those who don't know, I was raised in the church. Uh, I was a, a drug baby. I was drugged to church <laughs> all the way up until uh, until I was old enough to to not go. Okay, and I had a few years there where I I did. Now even in those years of my rebellion, I was kind of one that lived a double life. So I wanted to please my parents and the people that were praying for me, and so I put on that facade with them, and then I was somebody else. Okay. And I'll tell you honestly, to the point where really, I didn't know who I was. Amen. Aren't you glad that God knows who we are? Amen. You know, I'm, I still, there's still is times when I don't know who I am. I'll be honest with you. Because we're, we're being changed. Yes. The friends that I used to run around with, they don't like the change. <laughs> Yeah, they want they their their bragging rights is about everybody that stayed the same from back when we were running around doing things we shouldn't shouldn't have done. Yeah. But my life has been changed and transformed to the point where I look and I say, well, there's one that I know really truly knows me. He's the one that created me. Yes, and he saw the end from the beginning in all of us. And yes, I mean to tell, he knows from the moment we're born and before. To the moment that we cross over to the other side, and you know what he's telling me? The bad news is, is that right now we just see a, a, a short life expectancy. I don't care if it's a hundred years. That's short to me. It goes by too quick. But that's just the beginning. Praise God. That's the positive. Is that that's not the end, not even for a moment. If, if we cross over from this life to the next, Paul the Apostle said, if there was no resurrection from the dead, I would be of all men most, most miserable. miserable. Yes. And, and no wonder why. That man was suffering in his flesh all the time. But you know what I noticed in the scripture? Both Paul and Peter had the Lord speak to them and told them that they were going to cross over. Yeah. They said, Peter said, I'm going to soon lay down this earthly tabernacle as the Lord Jesus has shown me. That's what he wrote in his second epistle. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, now, isn't that something? Now, God can't tell everybody that. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that can't receive that. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you what, when you begin to realize that this life is only a springboard into eternity, praise yes. God. Yes. Praise God. And I'm Amen. not taking away from the fact for a moment, I'm not taking away from, from the fact that God's going to bring us to the point where we, these bodies are transformed. Amen. And there's going to be a people that don't see death. Now, I, my great-grandfather, Brother Wesley, he preached and believed with all his heart that he, his body was going to be transformed and that he wasn't going to see death. Yeah. And you know what? I don't believe he did see death. Oh. Amen. That's I believe right. he crossed right over and never, never saw death. His oh. body did. His yeah, body, his natural right. body did. But he crossed right over right from life into life. Yes. Praise God. Amen. And he was a warrior. He was a fighter. You know, there was a lady, her name's Sister Pratt. She used to come to our church way back when I was growing up in Des Moines, Iowa. And she told after my great-grandfather had passed over, she said, I had a dream of Brother Wesley. And she said, and he was in battle fatigue. He was dressed like a warrior over in the Marines. My great-grandfather never was in the, in the natural service. But I'll tell you what, the Lord was using him as a warrior yes. of the Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And there's a people today... That God is raising up to be warriors, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes. Because everything that happens here in the flesh is controlled and the root cause of it comes out of the spirit. Yes. Because everything that's seen was made by those things that aren't seen. Right. Praise God. Yes. Everything in the visible comes out of the invisible. And the natural life that pertains to this flesh is temporary. But the life that's invisible is eternal. Yes. Praise God. So the words that we're speaking, we're going to speak about natural things for a moment. But what we want to realize is that's the temporary that's bringing us into a, a place of perfection. Yes. Amen. Praise yes. God. 
If we're called sons of God, and if we've been born from above by an incorruptible seed of God, and God is now our Father, and we proclaim God is our Father, I'll tell you what, God isn't going to give birth to fleshly people. Amen. Thank God. <laughs> if God has a son, guess who the son's going to be? He's going to be a part of God. Yes. Hallelujah. A son of God. God said, let us make man in his own image. I'm telling you right now, and I'm not going to tell you you're God, but I'm telling you what, your seed, your living eternal seed is from God yes. and not from man. Praise wow. God. Yes. And the Lord wants to give us confidence so that we can overcome the fear of death. Amen. Do you know that it talks about over in Hebrews, and this wasn't a scripture. Let me let me turn here. My I'll find it a lot quicker here. This wasn't a scripture I was going to read, but I just feel this coming to me. Maybe somebody needs this, and I'm sure you've all heard this, read this scripture. I'm sure it's been preached here. But over in Hebrews, it talks about the work that our Lord and Savior has done. Over in the second chapter of Hebrews, it talks about our great Savior and High Priest, mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm telling you right now, from my from my perspective, I'm, I'm never going to see God outside of Jesus Christ. There's one mediator between man and God, the man, Christ Jesus. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus made it clear. He said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. They yes. said, show us the Father, Lord. He says, have I been with you so long and yes. you can't see me? Amen. <laughs> he revealed the Father, and that's what got him in trouble, is he began to proclaim, if you, if you say that you're children of God, then you would know who I am. Yes. They said, well, we're of our father Abraham. And he said, Abraham desired to see my day. Yes. And he said, you're not yet 40 years old. How can you say Abraham saw your day? <laughs> Come on. Before Abraham was, you know what? I think those apostles got real quiet. They said, no, Jesus, please don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. Because they knew what, when Moses was going to Pharaoh, and he said, who do I say that I, who do I say sent me? He said, you say, I am sent you. I yes. am. Je Jesus said, before Abraham was, before Abraham was, I am. Praise God. Jesus was given a, a, an understanding of who he was and where he came from. And they immediately, you read that scripture, they immediately took up stones to stone him. Because he was, he was speaking what they considered to be blasphemy. Well, we're speaking words that are considered to be blasphemy mm -hmm. by a lot of the world. But it's not because we want to be anything in ourselves. It's because we want to see the one who knows us, to know him even as we're known by him. To know the purposes of God. To know the love of God. To know the mercy of God. To know the eternal life of God. We know one another after the flesh in this season of life, but there's going to come a time whether we put on incorruption in this life or whether we cross over into the other side that we're yes. not going to know one another by the flesh anymore. Praise God. Like we were talking about earlier, we're not going to, we're not going to take the skin with us. <laughs> yes. We're going to lay it down. All those wars and all that strife over this outer shell is going to be done away with. Amen. Woo, everybody that's caught up in that in that mess out there, they're judging after the flesh. But they said, we once knew Christ Jesus after the flesh. They knew him as a Jew. Yeah. But we don't preach Jesus the Jew anymore. No. We preach Jesus the Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The spirit of the living God that was in Jesus Christ, that same spirit, if it lives in you, if it dwells in you, it's going to make your mortal body alive yes. and it's going to transform your body, this vile body of corruption, like after his glorious body. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know what? Unless the Lord tells us, we don't know yet. I, if you know, you let me know, brother. If you know if you're going to cross over or if you're going to be changed, you let me know. Because I'll grab hold of you and I'll go right with you. Amen. And if anybody else knows, you just tell me. I'm all ears. Amen. But if, if whether I whether I lay down this body or whether this body's transformed, 
Hallelujah. I'm the Lord's. Amen. And I'm not going to die. I'm going to tell you right now. He who sees the Lord, yet even if he dies, he's still going to live. Yes. Because he's the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. Oh, so Jesus, what was he? He was made a little lower than the angels, it says over in Hebrews, the second chapter, the ninth verse. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God, what what that he by the grace of God the gift of God you know the, the, the apostles they, they rejoiced over there in Acts when they were beaten by the council because they had raised up that man that was laying from his mother's womb Peter and John went to prayer and they saw that man at the temple at the gate or at the porch there, and they said, in the name of Jesus Christ, we don't have silver or gold, but stand up and walk. And those religious leaders in that governmental system of the Jews of that day, they said, don't preach anymore in this name. And they, they told them, whether it's right in the eyes of man or God, you decide, but we're going to be obedient unto God. Amen. And so they suffered reproach. I believe they were beaten there yeah. over in Acts, about third chapter, fourth yeah. chapter. And when they came out of that place, they began to pray. They lifted up their voices together in one accord and they began to praise the Lord that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Oh God. Hallelujah. Do you know if we suffer for the name of Jesus, we don't do it unless the Lord's found something worthy in us. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus received a name above other, every other name, not became, because he became like the governments of, or the government leaders of this world, but because he was the governmental leader of the kingdom of God and humbled himself yes. and emptied himself of all the glory that man is after that he might become flesh and blood and die as a man and become our great high priest yes. who is tempted in every way as we are tempted, yet we without sin. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why he's the Savior. That's why he's the wonderful counselor. That's why he's the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and he's our Lamb. Hallelujah. And he's the great high priest that laid down his own life. Hallelujah. He became the priest, the sacrifice. He became the blood offering. He became all things unto us. Hallelujah. That we might become all things to all men through him. Hallelujah. Amen. Not by ourselves, but as a part of the body of Christ. Because Jesus said, sacrifice and offerings I would not, but a body that I have prepared for me. And you're the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's living and moving in you. He's made you a part, hallelujah, of his blood sacrifice, believe it or not. It's his life that lives within you. And he says, greater love has no man than this, but to pour it out, to lay down his life for his friends. Hallelujah. We're showing the love of God not by keeping our life, but by laying it down for one another, just as Jesus has showed us how. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's in flesh and blood. It's in the nature of a man to save his life, to maintain it. It's in the nature of Adam. Cain killed his brother. Because of jealousy, and he tried to raise up as a Lord above his brother by taking the life of his brother. But the Lord Jesus raises up as a Lord above his brother by laying down his life for his friend. Hallelujah. And saying, forgive them, God. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Yes. That's why when he said, pray for those that persecute you. Love those who curse you. He wasn't talking about the nature of man. He was talking about the nature of God that was revealed in the Son. Hallelujah. It's been revealed unto us so that we can be partakers of His divine nature through the word of faith. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, this is not a man's doctrine. This is the doctrine of the Son of God who loved That's us right. and gave Himself for us. Yes. He was the living doctrine. Oh, I get tired of hearing people battle back and forth over doctrines of Me men. Yes. If it's the living doctrine, it's going to bring true humility. Yes. My God. When I see him begin to appear in my life, there's not an ounce of pride left in me. I want to crawl down under the earth because I see him in all of his majesty. 
And if I raise up, it's not because I raise up in my flesh. It's because he begins to inhabit my land. And yes. begins to cause that seed of life to graze up in me by the power of his resurrection. And I find out it's by his light and by his water of the word that begins to strengthen me where I can stand up not in the strength of a man, but in the strength of God. Hallelujah. Yes. What a difference. Because he removes a desire to be anything in ourselves. I find out in my flesh there's all kinds of desire to try to be somebody. Amen. Hey, I said I'd be honest. I'm going to be honest with you. We have to deal with the true enemy. Right. Praise God. Amen. Jesus had to deal with it. Yeah. When he was tempted of the devil, it was to begin to work out of that carnal nature, out of that flesh nature. If you be the son of God. Begin to prove it to me through your own desires, through your own desire to prove yourself to be something. Jesus said, man won't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yes. I got caught away, guys, so I'm going to go back to the scripture. It's good. That he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory. You know, I watched this old movie. It's called Glory. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But it's about one of the first regiment during the Civil War. It was an all-black regiment back there. And it's called Glory because they gave their lives along with the, 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 the rest of the men at that time. And I'm not, I'm not talking about both sides were looking for glory, weren't they? It was a glory to die for what you believe. It was glory. It was an honor. Our, the, the men in our military today, it's an honor. We give honor to whom honor is due. The people, and if there's any here, I honor those that have, that have fought on behalf of their country, that have fought the good fight. I honor that. See, that's, that's, that's glory. But there's a greater glory that God's revealing in this day. Yes. It isn't, see, we've gone and, and, and we've seen the, the struggle according to the flesh with natural warfare. Uh -huh. And God's used it. So I won't take away from that. And I, I still give honor to those who fight in natural warfare because I know that God's, it's, we're still in that season, aren't we? Yeah. But do you know, I believe we're coming to a time just as we believe that we're coming to a time where we're going to put on incorruption, we're coming to a time where these wars, according to the flesh, are going to cease. Yes. Mm -hmm. Prophesy. We can find it in the scripture, but there's something within our hearts that's burning, a groaning, hallelujah, a travail in birth to see that which has been hidden in us to be revealed. And it's the Prince of Peace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. You know, they looked for Jesus. They looked for the Messiah to come. I said this at the last meeting I was at, but they looked for the Messiah to come. They were in bondage. See, we're in bondage today. And I'm going to get to a little bit. I, I don't think I'll go. I think the Lord's taking me a little different direction, so I'm just going to obey the Lord. Amen. Isn't that how it is? Boy, I had about 50 yeah. verses, <laughs> and I'm not getting to one of them. But that's how it is, you know. Flood, we go in the vein that the Lord creates for us. Yes. Flood, right man. out of eternity. Hallelujah. He surpasses what, what, what the, our own mindset begins to bring Amen. us into the mind of Christ where we yes. can see the needs of the people met. Praise yes, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. You, what Jesus. a need there is in this day for healing, for peace, for yes, what, what's been said, for a soundness of mind. Yes. You know, a lot of the mental illnesses, they come from a fear. There's a fear. It's in the heart of men. And I believe if we get down to the end of it, it really is a fear of death. And I'm going to go down and read that here. It, it doesn't have to be just the end time of death, but there's a death <coughs> that comes to us, isn't there? Yep, there is. We've all experienced that. That death where there's something in us that's struggling to maintain something that we believe has to remain in our life, yep. and the Lord begins to cut us off from it. Take oh, we can away. say it's the enemy, we can say it's the devil, but I'm telling you what, the devil don't do anything except God allows him to do. That's just right. read Job and yes. find out about it. Exactly. He, he goes and presents himself just like all the other spirits before God, and he has to 
ask permission. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Sure. Oh, look at Job. Yeah, he blesses you, but you put a hedge around him. Take that hedge and let me touch him. And he'll curse you to your face. God said, go ahead. Go ahead, brother Satan. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. God's got the devil on a leash and he can't go any further Amen. than God allows him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'll tell you right now. The Satan, Satan becomes a servant of the Most High God. I can prove it by the Scripture because Paul said, I delivered such a one to Satan that the, the flesh might be destroyed, but that the spirit might be saved. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. God begins to take away the fear of these things that plague the mind of man and get, become some great imagination so that That's we can right. see all things are in obedience to God and nothing is outside of his will. Oh, that'll, that'll make people disturbed. Yeah. You mean to tell me God allows this? He's got a purpose that flesh and blood can't yet understand, but he's got a purpose. Right. Yeah. And whatever it is we have to go through, God's the author and the finisher of it. And yes. religion will come and try to steal your faith and say, you've done something that's allowed the devil to get to you, but I'm telling you right now, God is the author and the finisher of our faith, and he'll use the lowest points in our life to build up somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a... My, Wife's mother's mother, my wife's grandmother, she's in bad health in Las Vegas and has been, and they've been taking care of her. And I'm not going to go into detail because it, it, in some ways it's a private matter. But I can tell you right now, those are the hardest things we have to deal with, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Amen. We're, we're, we, we find ourselves wrestling with God. Because we know all things are in His hands. Yes. God will begin to reveal to us his grace and his mercy and his love. Hallelujah. The enemy will have to be put out of our house that comes to accuse and to steal and destroy. Yeah. To where God begins to speak that in all these things, there's a purpose that he has to unveil his love that's within us. Hallelujah. 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 We're not talking about some gospel that doesn't touch us in the deepest part of our heart. We're talking about knowing Christ in the lowest of the lows so that we can know in the heights of the Spirit. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said that I might know Him. Yes. Yes, in the power of His resurrection, but in the fellowship of His sufferings. Being made conformable unto His death, that by any means I might attain unto the resurrection from the dead. Yes, let us attain Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we read about this Jesus so long ago, but a lot of religion makes it just an old story. Yeah. And then a someday story. But a lot of the power is removed from today. Right. Yeah. But the Lord wants us to live in a living reality Amen. that gives us a power of mind. He didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power, power. and of a, a sound, sound mind. mind. Yes. Sound mind means Clarity. what's already been said. Yes. That in the midst of the storm, when everything's coming, it doesn't mean every time the storm's going to stop, it means he gives us a soundness of mind in the midst yes. of it. A power over our inner man, a power over the nations, a power over the accusers that come to attack us so that we can do as Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to calm down. <laughs> I'm going to calm down. There's something here, brother, that just it just draws it right out come of the on, depth of me. Come on, come on. I know there's a work in here. Yes. Oh, I feel the Lord has a, ordained a people for this day. There's a deep calling unto deep in the midst of the hearts of God's people. Oh, it's not a place of necessarily comfort for the flesh. But God's going to comfort you by the Spirit, yes, sister. Jesus. He's going to lay his hand upon you in the hallelujah, midnight hour. Hallelujah. And you're going to begin to feel, hallelujah. hallelujah, the groanings of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. But just as the angels came and comforted Jesus, he's going to comfort you in the midnight hour and hallelujah. give you strength. Jesus. Hallelujah. A soundness of mind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Seeing the love of the Father in a real and a living way that will sustain you. Hallelujah. And set you up as a pillar in the house oh, yeah, of your God, that's, that's able to stand in the midst of every situation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Speaking hallelujah, not the, minds of, the, the, the mind of a man, but speaking after the order and the power of an endless life. Hallelujah. Yes. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord is removing from us all thoughts of death and bringing us into pure life. Hallelujah. After the words of that song that were written by the Spirit, healing wings. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, give us your flight. Hallelujah, son of righteousness, arise in our heart. The day star arises is in our heart. We begin to see the light of God in the midst of the darkness. Yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me because thou art my comfort. Hallelujah. Thy rod and thy staff give me strength. Oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, he anoints our head with oil. Our cup overflows. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies and we begin to eat that yes. true and that living bread from above. Hallelujah. He sustains us in the midst of the storm. He makes us more than conquerors though we go through. Hallelujah. Into the depths, oh God. Oh, there's a ministry. They would tell you that if you go into the depths of some pain, that somewhere you've missed it and you haven't had enough faith. But the Lord says, I'm creating greater faith through the trial of your affliction. Yes. I'm going to cause you to see me that you might comfort others in their affliction. Hallelujah. Glory to hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not looking for an increase of our faith. We're looking for his mind and his faith to rise up in us. Oh, we become his little children. We say, oh God, if I have a father and I ask him for bread, he won't give me a stone. How much more will you give me the Holy Spirit that's full of, full of faith and love? It's not just for speaking in tongues. It can do that too. But we're talking about a word of power that sustains people. Hallelujah. Where their faith is strong. It becomes one with his faith. It's strengthened, oh God. Yes. Hallelujah. What a difference. Thank you, Jesus. What a difference. Jesus says, here, he says it right here, the 11th verse, for both he that sanctifieth, that's, that's, that's he that separates us out. See, we're born into the mind of man. We're born into the mind of flesh. We didn't ask for it. We inherited through our, through our ancestor, Adam. He says that he subjected us to this mind, yeah. but in hope. And it's not a vain hope. It's a living hope. Right. Yes, it is. Anything that he's done, he's done it to, to show forth his love in the ages to come. Praise God. All are going to know that love from the least to the greatest. There's not going to be one left out. All are going to come to the knowledge of the glory of God that's in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. So he says, he sanctifies us. For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all one. Jesus, Jesus sanctified himself. He's about the only one that can really do it. He, he, he said, I lay down my life of my own accord. No man takes my life from me. Oh, I'm so thankful for that. It wasn't through his weakness it was his great power to yes. be able to lay it down yes. and say, not my will, but thine be done. Yeah. He's the only one that has power to do it. But he'll do it in us. And he is doing it in us. Where we're, we're able to go through everything that we go through, not because he's having to drag us and kick us through it. There's a season for that too. But it, maturity brings us into a place where it, Psalms says, don't be like the horse and the mule that need bit and bridle to turn them every way that they go. Right. But he says, but I'm going to speak to you. And it was the Spirit that drove Jesus. The Spirit drove Jesus. It wasn't circumstances that took Jesus out into the, the wilderness to be tempted of the, the enemy. He, he went of his own accord by the Spirit. That's right. When he went to the cross, it wasn't those men that came and got him. No, it really wasn't. No, it wasn't. You know, we saw that the moment they came to arrest him, Where's Jesus? Who's Jesus? I am he. That man fell backwards. Yeah. That was the power that I, I believe Jesus had to rein it in at that point. He had to rein in the power. Because yes. if he would have continued to maintain that power of God, they wouldn't have been able to touch him. No, sir. 
Hallelujah. It was too they, they They went to arrest him and they fell backwards because of the virtue that was flowing out of that man. Hallelujah. He'd been praying in the garden and the Lord had sent ministering angels to strengthen him and the strength yes. of God was radiating from that man. Yes. They couldn't have touched him except he allowed. Look, look what happened with Judas. It says it right there in the scripture. We give way too much credit to Judas, Judas yeah. and to the devil. Jesus yeah. said, oh go and do what you're going to do. Yeah. Do it quickly. And, you know, I'm amazed every time I read that scripture. It, God's so good at blinding the eyes of his own people. Mm -hmm. The disciples sat right there, and they had no idea what he was saying. <laughs> and they had just asked. They, he had just said, one of you is going to deny me. Mm -hmm. One of you is going is to, you know, cut, bring the, the people to come and get me. They just asked him. <laughs> Here he shows it to him right out in the open. Oh, well, he's, he's probably go. You know, get some, take the money bag. <laughs> he's got he's got something he needs to do. That's how it is with the Lord. Yeah. He's bringing us. I love the songs that we're singing here today. See, we're talking about a growth. We're yeah. talking about a maturing up, where the Lord can begin to trust us with the knowledge of what He's doing. Yes. On both sides. Of the spectrum, where he can he can show us the hardship, and we're not going to tuck tail and run or find a way to get out of it. And he can show us the glory, and we don't run towards it in our earnest presumption. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, a son that's being raised up to take his father's business or a kingdom, he really knows he's not to take it until the father gives him. Amen. And you know what the ones are that usurp the Father's kingdom? They're murderers Amen. and they're thieves. And we can find it again and again in the scripture. Because that's why we have all these kings that were getting killed off by their sons. David himself. Yeah. Isn't that right? His son tried to take the kingdom. David wouldn't do it. David wouldn't take the kingdom from Saul. He, there was a right spirit in that man. Yeah. Yeah. See, there's a, there's, he's put a right spirit in the people. And, mm -hmm. and he's not going to let us go off the path. He's going to keep a people all in the palm of his hand. Praise God. And it doesn't mean he's not bringing everybody. But, but we know that there's, there's sons that are sons. And I don't want to say the other word. <laughs> there's sons that are illegitimate. The one receives correction yeah. every son that the Lord brings in is chastened yeah that's right praise God yes. hallelujah and if you're not and if I'm not then I'm a bastard is the word yeah but it isn't a curse word no and if it is the Lord shed his blood to forgive me <laughs> <laughs> so he says both he that sanctifieth, that's the Lord, and they who are sanctified, that's us, we're all one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. We were talking about that earlier. Oh, he's our Lord, he's our Savior, he's our King, he's our High Priest. And wonder of wonders, he is our brother. After the flesh, God couldn't be our brother as spirit. But Jesus became our brother because he took on flesh and blood and was made after sinful flesh, but without sin. Tempted in every way that we're tempted. Praise be unto God. We do Amen. preach Jesus. Yes. We don't preach ourselves, but we preach Jesus. Yes. yes. Praise God. And he said, saying, I will declare thy name unto the brethren in the midst of the church while I sing praise unto thee. I know that that's the Lord. That's him singing through us. We yield ourselves to the Spirit. You know, we can't really enter into praise in a real and a living way until we learn how to yield our members completely unto Him. That's the power of the Holy Spirit that purified our language on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Where we began to give our tongue up to Him. James said, all beasts have been tamed out here, but the tongue, no man can use. Yeah. Because it's a fire set on fire of hell. Yeah. And what a little member can turn giant ships. Yeah. 
So the yeah. tongue turns the body. Yes. Because out of the heart, the mouth yes. speaks. Yes. Yes. It makes known the hidden parts of the inner man. Hallelujah. And it brings them out into the open. And there's people that are That's good right. at hiding it. But I'll tell you what, God's even more subtle than the serpent. <laughs> oh, yeah. The serpent was the most subtle beast of the field. But God isn't a beast. He's spirit. Amen. And he created the serpent. That's right. I know there are a lot of theology that won't say that. They'll say other things. But I'm telling you right now, he created, you'll find it over there in Isaiah, he created the waster to destroy. Right. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's under his control. So if he was able to do that, and the enemy is his uh, bulldog, so to speak, He, 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 he's able to bring those things that are out of the depths of people's heart and expose them so that they can be done away with. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. He'll baptize us in the Spirit and in fire. Mm -hmm. There's a brother that writes a paper, J. Preston Evie. Mm -hmm. He's writing about that he had gone to a silver refinery he said, I, I stood in front of that silver refinery, and it says it was just like a river of silver that was melted. And he said, it looked so pure. It looked just perfect. And he said, but they took a reagent, and it was hot because it was melted. They took a reagent, and they cast it into that lake of silver. And all the impurities rose up to the top. And then they took and they raked out all the impurities. And then they did it again. And they added another reagent. And the impurities came up to the top and it looked black. And they pulled them all off with like a rake. And he used that as a picture to say, the Holy Spirit and the fire of the Lord, he Amen. heats this temple up. He heats up yes. this container. Hallelujah. Yes. And then he adds a reagent. And you know what a reagent is a lot of times? It's a trial. Yep. And it'll cause those things that aren't of him to rise up to the top and then he takes and he takes them away. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. He says the, the word of the Lord is like silver refined yes. in a fire, heated up seven times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the wisdom of our God. He knows how to purify us. Yes. He takes us through a process of trials to bring up everything out of us by the Holy Spirit and take it out of the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's a mystery to me that Jesus was the fullness of God bodily, and yet it says in Hebrews that the captain of our safe salvation was made perfect through sufferings. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, I know he became the perfect mediator because he went through what we go through in the flesh. Yes. So that we have an intercessor on our behalf that never sleeps or slumbers. Day and night, he intercedes on our behalf before the Father. Praise God. Yes. And we find ourselves co-workers together with him where we begin to intercede. I love the prayer in this church. That's what we're doing at home. We're just finding the power to lift up others to continually, yes. what's that, like the, the ministry you put there on Facebook Messenger, to yes. begin to pray, hallelujah, to lift up the body. Jesus is doing that before the Father day and yes. night, praise God. And people are going through hard circumstances, but it's not for their destruction, it's not That's for right. their demise, it's for a purpose to bring out all the impurities, to Amen. purify a people, to make them That's fully right. in His image, hallelujah. Yes. And when they go through a hard situation, when we go through a hard situation, we find ourselves crying out to God and he appears in our midst and we see him and we're changed hallelujah yes you can't see the Lord and not be changed praise God hallelujah Amen. so he says it's it's and again 13th verse and again I will put my trust in him and again behold I and the children which God hath given me and there's there he is as a, the everlasting father he's a brother to us he's a father to us Jesus has been made all things unto us I'm so thankful for it. Amen. We've been bought, born again of that seed of Christ. It's the word of God that goes into our heart and begins to grow up in the image of him. Praise the Lord. That's the yes. kingdom of God that's within us. It's not meat and drink. It's not, in, in the long run, it's not going to be what we put into this body as far as food and drink. We do the best that we can with it, but I'll tell you right now, that's not the kingdom of God. 
they did away with unclean meats after that first covenant. I'm glad because I like a little pork too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> he claimed it all. He said it's not what goes into the man that defiles him, but it's what comes out of him that defiles him. Those things that proceed out of the heart of a man, not just the words, but the actions that go along yes. with it, they defile the man. Yeah. Come on. Praise God. All that religious stuff, that was just, that. all that was was a schoolmaster to lead us unto Christ. Amen. Praise God for it. God needed that law to show to our flesh that we would never be made perfect for, by the works of the law. He took it away by the blood of his cross and gave us a new and living way through the covenant of grace that we might stand upon the promises of God and declare his love for us. Hallelujah. That he so loved us that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth upon him might have everlasting life. And I'm telling you, it's a walk by faith, not by sight, not after the hearing of the ear, but it's according to his word that speaks out of the midst of our temple. And we're purified by that river of the water of life that washes over us and makes us clean in his sight. Hallelujah. 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 I'll tell you right now, I've learned that we get in the presence of the Lord and we begin to magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let my soul make her boast in the Lord and yes. the humble shall hear thereof and rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That river of water of life is on the inside of every one of us. Well, we've got to begin to draw out of the wells of salvation. And in that day, they'll say, praise the Lord. That's the well of life that begins to spring out of an individual. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of their trial, they begin to praise and worship the Lord, knowing that these sufferings are yet but a moment, not worthy to be compared to the excellencies yes. of the Lord, the power that shall be revealed in us. Yes. Hallelujah. There's a time of revealing of everything that he's planted in our heart. He's going to bring it to fruition and maturity. And the nations are going to come and they're going to eat from the, the, the fruit of your tree. Hallelujah. Yes. They're going to taste and see the Lord is good by having a relationship with you. Amen. And then they're going to find that the king dwells in your heart. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's the transparent Lord, street. Yes. That's the transparent gold of the city of God where the Lord, lamb is the light thing yes. thereof. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Jesus. And I say religion, you know, there is a pure religion. Yeah. And it's undefiled. Yeah. And it's to minister to the orphans and the widows in their need. It's always a giving of ourselves to others, and there's no law after it. There's only one law that counts, and that's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that's made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We walk by that law. By that spirit, that's why I'm not getting caught up in the governments of men because they can make laws. We talked about it. They can set all their ordinances. But I'll tell you what, it'll never change the hearts of an individual. But the gospel, the word of faith, the word of Jesus Christ will go into the inner man and it doesn't require a law to stop that's people right. from doing wrong. It goes surpasses the law because that's been nailed to his cross. Hallelujah. Yes. And we find a new life, a resurrection power raising up in the midst of God's temple who the yes. people out here are. Yes. Even though they don't even know it yet. God's called him to be a holy habitation. He set his eye upon his people and he says, I'm going to purify you and make you a holy place. Hallelujah. Just like the bride of God, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ that descends from heaven, the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. It comes down adorned as a bride for her husband. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's not a natural city out here. It's a people. It's a habitation. It's a place for God to dwell in. The, the, the temple of God is made with hands. Hallelujah. And the, those old those old saints of God, that's why they went about, it talks about in Hebrews and dens, and they went about in caves and they weren't worthy of the world. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what poverty they were found in because they were looking for a city. They were looking for a dwelling place yes. whose building and maker was God. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. And he's put that same desire yes. in a people today. Yes. We don't want to get led astray with the masses that are trying to get their name on real estate and all these things. Thank God for this building. Thank God for everything God yes. does. He can use it all. But people are caught up in that. And that is not the kingdom of God. God owns this earth and the fullness thereof is his. Yes. And he's going to give it to whoever he desires. And it's Amen. the meek. Hallelujah. It's the humble in heart. He'll resist the proud, but he'll give grace under the humble. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. And he's the only one that can make us humble in his sight. Hallelujah. Our flesh will deceive us every time. We can try to humble ourselves, 
But it's the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ that brings true humility. Yeah, that's true. Hallelujah. So for for as much then, 14, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself. Oh, I'm so thankful he did it. God put on flesh and blood in the man Jesus Christ. He, the word that created the heavens and the earth, the word that was spoken in the very beginning when the earth, when the world was dark and void of any life other than the life of God, he spoke the word and said, let there be light and there yes. was light. And it talks about it over in John that he is the light that comes into the world to light every man. Hallelujah. Amen. The life became the life. The light became the life. The life of every man. And we can gain life by drawing from him. And we're never going to be able to just draw from ourselves. We have to draw from one another because he's put his life in a body. We can't become a monk or a nun and try to gain access just by our own holiness. That's it's right. the holiness yeah. of the body of the Lord. That's why yes. He's made it a many-membered temple in my Father's house or many dwelling places, many mansions. Hallelujah. If it were not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you, and the place that I prepare for you is Hallelujah. right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Because it's your life. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the temple of God that's a clay, a clay house. Paul said in another word, he said, we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the glory and the excellency of God may be of him and not of us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But you'll find out, he says, oh, we're, 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 we're tempted and we're, we're, we're found in despair. We're found in these things. But we're not crushed. Hallelujah. We find ourselves dying daily. Those who live are constantly being put to death, Paul said, that the life of Jesus might be manifest in you. What a mystery. What a mystery. Paul said, we're comforted with the same comfort that we receive of Christ, that we might comfort one another. So yes. it's, it's a living relationship. It'll never be a concept. It has to be a part of this life. We will never escape the tribulation. He says that you're going to pass through tribulation in this life. I don't know why I'm going down this road. This is not what I had. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm trying to just be led by the Spirit. Yes. I feel that, that well of life, that water of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. It just wells up in us. Yes. Hallelujah. And we trust Him that He's going to meet the needs of the people. And that He's going to comfort. He, he's promised the Holy Ghost to be a comforter. The Holy Spirit, He said, He's your comforter. Praise the Lord. He's going to lead you into all truth. He's going to unveil the Father to you. And I and my Father are one. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, here it is, here's the verse I wanted, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Mm. I think this is the bondage that still has the majority of the world captivated. The fear of death. Well, we know it is, right? We just went through a year of it. Mm -hmm. It was the fear of death. We were told, you know, every and 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 I'm not I'm not belittling it. That fear is in all of us according to the natural. Yeah. I fear for my children. Don't yeah, we all? Yeah, absolutely. If they're in danger, I fear for their life. Yeah. That's a, it's a, it's in us. Amen. But the Lord, through Him, through Him, we're going to be to the place where we no longer fear death, not for ourselves, nor for anybody else. Because yes. we have such an expectancy of life, such a faith of life, such a power of life within us. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's doing that in us. Yes. Where we can, we can say with Paul, to live is Christ and to die is gain. gain. Yes. And I know he was talking about the death to the carnal nature, but not just that, because he said if we put off this earthly tabernacle, this earthly house, this body of flesh, mm -hmm. we have a tabernacle not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to go to Isaiah this is, the, this is the scripture that the Lord really woke me up with this morning. And I'm just going to touch on it. I'm not going to be too much longer. When I was, when I was thinking about the, what we see all around us and 
We're not going to magnify it. Why do we have to magnify it? There, none of us are blind. We can look around and see the darkness of the world. The darkness of the world is nothing more than just the absence of the light and the presence of the Lord. Wherever He is, is light. Then we can, if you're like me, I can wrestle with concepts in my mind because we say we know by the scripture, by the word, that God's everywhere and in all things. Paul said it to those heathens out there in Athens, I think. They were unbelieving. They had an image to an unknown God. And Paul said, this is the one I came to preach to you about, the unknown God. And he said that you might feel out after him because he's closer than any of you know, and I'm paraphrasing, because in him we live and move and have our being. Because he surrounds us and he's in us and he fills all things. And that's the Father. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. And so we say, well, if he's everywhere and God is light and we know that he is, then how can there be darkness anywhere? Right? Right. But if you go back to Genesis, to the first chapter of Genesis, look at the mystery of what God did. In the beginning when he spoke, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And I believe that is both the word and the image of the word of God that, that, that became flesh and blood that dwelt among us, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the, that is the word that John said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, in the yes, Gospel of John. Yes. Mm -hmm. And everything that was created was created through and by that word. Yes. That's the same word that God spoke here. And he spoke the word, and it was light. Yeah. As it came out of him, it was light. Yeah. And that light manifests itself in the world, and it says... Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Praise God. Amen. He actually took that presence, that light, and He's the only one that could do it. He surpasses our understanding, because He says He fills all things, and to Him, light and darkness is no different. He dwells in the midst of the darkness, and yet He's light. Praise God. Hallelujah. But yet that light of the Lord is to be manifest, is to be experienced. It's, it is what brings all life to the surface. We can see that out here in our gardens, right? You got to yeah. plant your garden somewhere where it has a little sunlight, right? Yeah. If you try to go where it's always shade, it won't do so good. It requires that light. That light is the life. Not yes. just of men, but of all that we know of life. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And yet in the midst of our day, we have a definite discernment between what's light and what's darkness. And we can find a lot of scripture that says, when you're in darkness, you don't know where you're going. We know that by the natural. But we're not talking about just darkness of the natural eyes. We're talking about spiritual darkness. Amen. There's a whole company of the world out here who has no knowledge of the Lord, no knowledge of the Christ, and they're in absolute spiritual blindness. Yeah. And when I go and talk to a man that's an agnostic, and I talk to him, and I said, so what is your hope for life after death? And he says, I have none. Because I can't believe in anything that I can't reason out, that I can't discern with my senses. Yeah. And I said, well, that's hopeless. And he said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> So I have a manifestation right there of the darkness. And that darkness is filling that man. His, his spirit is dark, darkened. Right. He can't see anything that he can't discern with his senses. And that's the natural mind. That's the carnal mind. The carnal yes. mind wars against the things of the spirit. Yes. Can't understand them. Can't discern them. Right. Praise God. Well, what do we find here in the second verse of chapter 60 of Isaiah? Is for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness the people. Gross darkness the people. What came to mind to me was over there, I think about Exodus, the 10th chapter, when the plagues were going out towards Egypt. And he's, and they 
Pharaoh wasn't moved. Of course, it says right in there, if you read it, God was hardening the heart of Pharaoh. He had a purpose in what he was doing. And the, the plague of the locusts came, ate everything up that was remaining from the hail, from the plague of the hail. And here's the thing, when I was reading that, and I was going to go to that, but I'm just going to paraphrase it, so I don't want to take too much time. But if you go back there and read there, my heart has really been moving now towards the younger generation that's mm -hmm. coming up. Our children, our grandchildren, some of you great-grandchildren, I don't have great-grandchildren yet, <laughs> but I know they're coming because i got lots of kids, so <laughs> some, somebody's going to have yes, that in the future. But, but you know, we're not done yet. There's still people coming up that have to navigate through the darkness out here. And yeah. we're not to be hopeless. We're not to have a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. So we have to trust that God has a plan in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of this. So when I was reading there in Exodus 10, I was amazed that after the plague of the locusts, Pharaoh said, okay, go. Go ahead, go. Go and worship your God. And he said, okay, but we, Moses said, but we've got to take all the children and the women and our livestock. And Pharaoh said, no. He said, no, you can take the men, but no. See, he wouldn't let the children go. And that's when the darkness, that's when the darkness came. That's when the darkness came. Mm -hmm. So I feel that in the spirit today. That, see, there's a darkness. There's a gross darkness. Can we all yes. agree? There's a gross darkness out here. Yeah. They, back there, when you read that in Exodus, it, they said it was so gross that it could be felt. Oh. Wow. A darkness that could be felt, and it terrified the Egyptians. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in my heart that Egypt in the scripture is a picture of the systems and the governmental systems of this world. That's right. Okay? When he and, and I know it has more meanings than that because, of course, the children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt, and that was the Passover, and we read that right after the plague of the darkness. There was only one more plague remaining after the plague of the darkness, and that was the firstborn that was going to be killed. And we know yeah. that that was a picture of the first man, Adam. Hallelujah. Because the first man is of the earth, earthy. And the second man is the Lord from heaven. The firstborn is the man of Adam. The second man is the Christ man. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. I born the image of the earthy after my natural parents that the descendant goes all the way back to Adam. But I've been born again of the incorruptible seed yes. of Christ. And he's the new man. Hallelujah. And at Passover, when, when that death angel went out and they took the blood of the lamb, we know that's a picture of our Passover lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, and they put it over the doorpost. Amen. That death angel passed over, but he took the firstborn son. Praise God. Yes. The Passover took that na natural man, Adam, high, and that's took right. him out of the way. Right. Hallelujah. And when they went forth out of that place, they went in newness of life, and they even said it was a beginning of years to them. Their calendar began. It was a new life. It was a new birth. Praise God. So they were delivered not only over that 430 years, I read it, to the day they were in that bondage. God has a perfect timing. No doubt that there's a re there's a purpose in that. I'm not going to get down on those rabbit trails. But God brought them out into newness of life. And they did bring their children. And they brought their flocks and they brought their herds. And they came out of there wealthy. Wealthy. You know, if you read it, it says right before that last plague, Moses, by the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God, said, everybody ask your Egyptian neighbors for all their gold and all their silver and everything. Their clothing and everything they've got. Because when we go out of here, we're, gonna, we're, we're taking all the riches of Egypt yeah. with us. And they did. And the Egyptians were so tired of them and so terrified because the firstborn of all their children had died and of the cattle. Yes. I read that and I thought, my God. He made a fullness of that plague. But back to the plague before that, the plague of the darkness, it, it, it really spoke to me that it took the darkness for the governments of men to release the children. Uh, we don't see these things. A lot of times we find ourselves fighting against the very thing that God's going to use to bring deliverance. Yeah. You know? 
I, w I wouldn't, I had so many people in this last time of all this political season that wanted me to join in ranks, and I'm not going to get off on politics, but I know how much this has been so clearly manifested during this last season. And all the different ones that I know, they so wanted me to put my name and put everything behind something out here in this world. And I'm not against, I'm, I'm for morality, okay? And I'll be honest with you, okay? Let me be real honest. I live in California, but ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm a conservative Republican. I was raised that way. Now, I do not, I'm not going to go down there. <laughs> Thank you. I don't want to be ostracized. <laughs> what I'm saying is, God will use the things that even spiritual people, okay, that know and love the Lord, will fight against yep. the ways of God. They'll fight against Him. I will tell you this. I don't get involved in the systems out here as much as I can avoid it. And I'll give you some real examples, okay? And so you can see how he said he called a peculiar people. Well, now I know it's not strange. It's called out and separated. Amen. But I live in California. We have 10 people in our home, eight children. Six of them have been born at home. The last one was born even without a midwife, just my, my wife. None of us are on health insurance. None of us have been vaccinated. I have, but my children. They're all homeschooled. Okay? I could go on and on. And I'm not, I, I so avoid saying those things because I know people make doctrines out of natural things. And I'm not trying to convert anybody to that, to any specific doctrine. I never bring it up. I'm bringing it up for this reason. Because that is the way the Lord led us. Right. Yes. Okay? But it was the Lord's leading. I can guarantee you it wasn't man. There Amen. wasn't one person out here that converted me to go that way. Yeah. I didn't go. We, My wife and I did not go that way because people said, came and said, you know what? You should come with us in this direction. Or, matter of fact, in a lot of ways, we went the opposite direction. Yes. We went, the more that a lot of the church is going and, and relying upon the systems of this world, the more God is calling us out of it. Amen. All of it. Yes. That's the Lord's doing. Amen. And again, I'm not, I, 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 I say that and I'll probably regret it. <laughs> but I won't. I won't regret it because I, I'll tell you what, I feel the Lord stirring of people not to not to do anything in the look we're out of the law we're not we're not preaching a law of what That's we all right. need to do to be right. good christians or to follow god on, we gosh. need to be led by the spirit yes, yes. I do not convert, I do not get into all these debates over all this stuff concerning the world. I have a conviction, my wife and I have a conviction. We don't want our liberties to be taken from us, though. We want to be led by God. Yes. And say we are being, and, 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 and a lot of the systems will bring us into bondage. Yeah. And yeah. say, no, we are your God. You will do what we say. We have the intelligence. And if we say to the systems, I'm following the voice of God. They will put us in the cuckoo bin, right? Yeah. Oh, God talks to you? God talks to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and we know where that will take us to, right? Yeah. So we're having to walk, and I stay away from it. You can, I mean, anybody that sees me on social media, I stay away from it. Totally away from it. I stay outside of that stuff. I am trying to hear the voice yes. of the Lord yes. in the midst of the yes. pollution out here. Yes, that's and it's a matters. pollution of voices. It's a pollution. Yes. God has a way for each and every one of us, and it's not going to look like every everybody else's way. And you know, we'll get into trouble comparing one another with that's ourselves. Right. Yes. That becomes a terrible stumbling block. Yes. We're to be liberated, to be free to follow yes. the Lord. Yes. And when, yes. when, when Moses came out of Egypt, he, and, and by the voice of God, and he told Pharaoh, 
Finally, we're getting the kids. The darkness came. It did the work. And in the midst of the darkness, that gross darkness for three days, there was light in the dwelling places of Goshen. Yes. There was light in the dwelling place. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise He's God. our dwelling place. Yes. We dwell in Him. And in Him is light. And it's the light of men. Yes. Praise God. There's no darkness in him. Praise the Lord. He can dwell in the midst of darkness, but there's no darkness in him. He has all understanding, all wisdom. Light is knowledge and the understanding of God. And we're to live in the knowledge of the Lord. And he's given us the mind of Christ that we might walk by the Spirit and not according to the dictates of the flesh or of the governments of this world. Jesus did it. That's why they crucified him. Because he did not walk according to the beat of their drum. Right. They said you cannot heal on the Sabbath day. And he proved to them he can and he will. They said you're working on the Sabbath day. He <laughs> said my father works today and I'm going to work. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. He picked corn on the Sabbath day. They said you can't do that on the Sabbath day. He said you guys are straining at a gnat yes. and swallowing yes. a camel. Yes. Yes. My God. And I'm telling you right now, if we haven't seen anything, I've seen loads of people and a lot of the officials of our world straining at a, at a gnat and swallowing a camel That's and right. trying to get all of the world to do it with them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel the Lord saying, come with me outside the camp, bearing my reproach. How yes. That's what it says back there in Hebrews. It says, let us go with him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. Outside the camp, he had to go, he had to leave his brothers and his sisters and that whole system of religion and politics and government. Because God, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the governmental power of their nation was the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. That's who ruled the government of the Jews. So he wasn't just getting into it with just, we always say it's religion. It's religion. They were the governmental leaders. Now they were underneath Rome, but they still, you remember when they took Jesus to Pilate, he says, I'm not going to crucify him over your guys' law. This means nothing to us. We're Romans. What do we care? You go out and crucify him and your, his blood be upon you. Okay, fine. His blood will be upon us. We're keeping our law. Yeah. Our structure of government. Wow. This man, and they tried to put it off on if you, you know, if you don't let us crucify him, then then Caesar isn't even your king. Because this man says he's that was all a side issue. They didn't care yeah. about this. Yeah. They wanted him to line up to their system of government. That's right. Jesus said, My kingdom is not yeah. of yeah. this yeah. world. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Folks, there's a kingdom that's in the midst of us. He said, when he began to do all these things, and he showed the Pharisees and the Sadducees things, he said, guys, if you can't believe me for what I'm preaching to you, believe me for the doctrine of my works. Because the works that I do, they speak for yes. me. And they rejected him. Amen. Yeah. They rejected that teaching that he had. So, But they saw the wonders, and they saw the miracles, and they said, they demanded of him, when is the kingdom of God going to appear? And you know what they were looking for? They were not looking for Jesus. They were looking for a warrior like David who had conquered the other kingdoms and set up Jerusalem and the, and the city of David as the world government. That's what they were looking for. Yeah. They expected it to be after the order of man. It sounds familiar, folks. Mm -hmm. It sounds very familiar to yes, this. They were looking to the natural governments and they were expecting Jesus to be that king. And Jesus said... The kingdom of God does not come with observation, but behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Yes. I am not coming to set up an order after the ways of man. My order has been planted in your heart through the Spirit, and you will be directed by the Holy Ghost. He will be your leader, your comforter, and your teacher. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a work he's doing in the midst of us. If we can yield and hear his voice. Praise God. And again, just take what I said about my own, what I've done, and just cast it aside. I'm not trying to make converts to my walk. 
as far as the natural. I'm saying we need to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes. And when we walk by the Spirit of the Lord, doesn't mean we won't go through trials. It won't mean we won't face hardship. But we will have a confidence that it is the Lord that is leading us and not man. Praise Amen. God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said back there, and I'm going to finish with this verse. Back in Isaiah, that darkness and that gross darkness. That's the negative. The gross darkness that will cover the people. That again, that's no knowledge of God. I thought I was going to read that scripture about the the famine in the land. The famine in the land, not of bread. Oh, we're going to have plenty of bread. We got stimulus checks. We got everything <laughs> we need. It's coming, okay? And I think they'll continue to create money and currency. It doesn't look like they're going to stop anytime soon. That's not the that's not the famine. No. The famine was out of the hearing of the word of God. Yes. And of course, they were in the days of the prophets. So they were looking for a prophet to speak. But Hebrews talks about it. It says, in times and days and seasons past, God spoke to us by the prophets. But today, he speaks to us by the Son. Amen. And it's not an outer voice. It's an inner voice. It's not a mediator as Moses was with the law. Not with the stone tablets that were written on stone, engraved in stone, but the tablet of your heart where the Holy Spirit writes upon your heart the commandments of God and he leads you in a way that no man knows. Praise God. Praise Just Jesus. as Abraham had to leave his father and his mother's house and had to go in a way that the Lord would show him. And it wasn't, there was no map that was given to Moses. He had to walk, I mean to Abraham. He had to walk day by day. Let me finish up. This is, this is the good news. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. That's the light, the knowledge of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. We see that. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And here's the great news. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. This is good news to me. Thy sons shall come from far, and my daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Wherever the children of this day, and, 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 I'm not talking about age necessarily, but we're talking about those that are walking in darkness, that are lining their lives up, to the nature and the wisdom of a carnal ideal. Carnal ideas and carnal ideals that are being spoken and, 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 and ministered, I would almost say. It's a gospel that's being preached. It's an idol. It's an idolatry that's, that's, that's gone throughout the whole land. And people have turned to that and they are seeking all of their strength, protection, and wealth from another place. Praise God. It's yes. Egypt. It's Egypt. Yeah. It's not It's not Christ. Christ is the light. Hallelujah. The yes. confidence of the Lord. We go to Him in our secret closet, don't we? We go to Him yes. between us and Him. And He will lead us. He will be the voice. Hallelujah. He'll lead us. He says, my sheep hear my voice. They won't follow another. I've, I've felt... And even on this trip, I can't tell you, folks, how many times I've been in the car in this, because I've done a lot of driving the last few uh, weeks. And and I'd be in my car, and I feel the Lord. I, I hope I didn't. Lord, forgive me if I, if, I, if I preach anything that sounds harsh or condemning. I'm, I've been praying to the uh -huh. Lord for real compassion and yes. mercy. Because I know that people are hurting. I know that people need deliverance. And I know that the Lord has the answer. And I have wept. I have shed tears in my car, just crying out to the Lord, and I can feel His mercy and His compassion. But I want to tell you this. You know, there was no more loving man on the earth than Jesus. But I don't find Him. You know, I can't find any example in the Scripture 
when he was running up and kissing people and hugging them and showing that kind of love. And there's nothing wrong with that. But his love was in that he manifested the life and the glory of the Father. Yeah. And the truth proceeded out of him that was absolutely unmixed. It wasn't mixed with the mind of fallen man, of the carnal nature. Love is righteousness and truth. We love our children. You know, if I never, if I couldn't hug or kiss or, you know, tell my children that I loved them, if I could lead them in the right way and, show, and, 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 and have them walk in goodness and truth and safety, that would show my love. Right? right? That would be a true... There's a lot of parents that they love their children, but they don't teach them in the way that they should go. That's right. And it hurts the children. Yep. You know, you can you can say, I love this person, and you can give them the very thing that's killing them. It's not, it's not showing very good love. It may be in your... It, there may be a compassion, but it's an earthly compassion. I believe that there's a lot, and I'll just say this. I have compassion for these governmental leaders. I've told my, when I've seen all this stuff, I'm not saying it to browbeat these people. They're in darkness. Yeah. They're in darkness. Yeah. I believe you can take the most wicked politician that you want, and I feel in my heart, these people are really doing what they believe is true. true. Yeah. 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 And some of them, it, you know, people write them off as just evil, and I believe they're really working for what they believe is compassion. We're trying to help people. We're yeah. we and, and obviously it's mixed. We know that in the nature of man is mixed yes. all kinds of defilement. There's all kinds of selfishness mixed with it. But in their eyes, and that's how it is in the natural mind, we can say, oh, it's compassion and it's love and it's all this goodness towards people. And it can be nothing but death. Nothing but death. But when we line up to the life of Christ, that pure love of the Lord, oh, he'll chasten us. He'll correct us. He'll cause us to go in the truth. Praise yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So I bless you, and I do love you, and I pray that the Lord just increase the body. I got caught up here today, folks. I got really caught yeah, up, and good. I felt the Spirit of the so Lord. Good. So I love you, and I bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's give Josh a hand. Today. I don't know about y'all, but... He just stirred up so much inside of me. Um, I, I'm seeing those of you who joined us and uh, tuned in on uh, Facebook. We appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to say a few things before we uh, transition over to some fellowship. I want to tell you, Josh, the reason you, I feel so one with you in the spirit, and the reason you, and it's the second time now you've uh, been transparent in regards to your position, and I appreciate that. I think it speaks volumes of us as a body, uh, you know, where uh, there should be no schism in the body. Amen. Nothing should divide us, not political parties, Amen. not agendas, Amen. not uh, social differences, uh, not uh, doctrinal uh, uh, views, Amen. because how lovely and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. And God's bringing the body of Christ to a place of unity. And we've seen, I think the church as a whole has witnessed so much division because of the things that have gone on for the past year and a half now Amen. in regards to uh, coronavirus and uh, political parties and all these things. And I think it's, uh, it's really... Uh, pushing the church into a place of true unity. Hallelujah. And I think that's why you feel the liberty to be so transparent in Amen. regards to your position because you know we love you and we cover you and we stand with you. And I think he knows my heart as, as uh, the head of this uh, little body, Dana and I here, uh, we take a strong stance in regards to, uh, you know, uh, and there again, I'm like Josh, you hesitate to say anything. Me and Steve have talked about it, you know, but I believe that the, the church has a place, and I said it like this, and, and hear me now, the church has a place in politics, but politics has no place in this church. In other words, it's, it's no different than if, 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 if I go to your house 
and bombard my uh, uh, self into your home, uh, I don't have no right to do that. But if you invite me as a man of God, then I'm going to come in there and I'm going to minister to you and build you up and lift you up. And that's the position of the church. Amen. I'm like Josh. I have a very strong stance on uh, moral and ethical and all these things. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm pro-life. Yeah. You know, and even that can be debated. Because then they say, well, what do you do with the death penalty? I'm pro-life. And uh, the only penalty of death is sin. Amen. Um, this, uh, with that being said, I, I just made a few notes as I was listening to Josh minister, and I haven't gotten to preach myself in, in a couple of weeks, so I feel the preacher raising up oh, in me as I, I begin to witness uh, Josh get called up. And, you know, I told uh, my friend Joey Land uh, when he was coming, he said, do I need to prepare anything uh, or just flow? And I said, prepare to flow. <laughs> and God has uh, I believe that's what he's doing with us Ed he's He's bringing us to a place uh, where we're instant in season and out of season and we're prepared just to flow just to get in the flow whatever God's doing let's get in there and, and be about our Father's business Amen. Uh, and this message because it is a message of life uh, there can't be life without a death Amen as much as it is a message of life, it's a message of death. And, and though a living will live, a dying will die. So something in us has to die that Christ is made alive in you. I was listening to Josh minister to this to, uh, tonight. And, and you know, uh, I also feel like that this place, and I don't mean to at all put us on a, a pedestal at all, but there's something uh, people get into, and I think it kind of uh, says something, and I believe this in the spirit. In, in, in this world, in the natural, there's uh, these new age people who believe in uh, there's certain areas in the world that there's a, a very strong, like an opening. You know what I mean? A very uh, spiritual. And I believe that in, in regards to... Uh, I believe that this place is a portal. I and when Josh said that, and you know, you, and, and some of you uh, or, or those may look on, on here and say, well, y'all are just uh, in, a, in an old double wide with paneling on the walls. <laughs> and you, you don't have uh, your strobe lights and your big um, sign and all this stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't make us small. It makes the person who looks at those things small. But we're not small. We serve a great big God. Yes, and the, we don't uh, talk about uh, this. The devil's a defeated foe. Amen. Amen. And, and we believe that. And, and, and we preach that. And we talk about that. Um, I want to tell you, Ed. God has brought you here. And God's going to begin to do a work in your life. I just kept feeling you in my spirit. And you you felt drawn. And, uh, and God's going to start to uh, begin to deal with you in your spirit. And, and God has not forsaken you. And He knows the cry of your heart. And I see your days being greater and more prosperous. Your heart is worried for your uh, children. But we're going to prophesy over your children and your children's children. Your, your mother and my grandmother didn't go through all that they went through so that we can be lost and undone. Amen. No different than Jesus didn't Amen. do what all He done so that we can be lost and undone. Amen. But because of the work and the things that they sown into you, Ed, and I see you, Ed, in the future, and Kim Clement said you look a lot better than you do right now. I see you in the future. Not that you look bad. <laughs> I ain't going to do you like Steve. <laughs> Not that you look bad, brother. Hallelujah. But I see you in the future and you look much better than you do right now. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm looking at uh, 
uh, and I, I, my sister Margaret was on here a while ago, so we had Ed here. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna tell on them. They were sweethearts when they was young. <laughs> but anyway, it, it it just it blesses my heart, Josh, to see how God, through all these things we've been through, here we are. Yes. Here we are, Ed. And God is now turning the page in our lives and we're going to see God begin to move and work in our children's life. And uh, I stood at uh, Natchez Trail and, and began to prophesy and minister to our children's children. And we've got to start doing that and speaking the word of life to our children's children. This world isn't lost and undone, but this world is full of the remnant seed of God who are world changers, hallelujah, who are going to begin to impact this nation and all the nations of the world. And we're going to begin to see God move miraculously, supernaturally. And it's not going to be through man's system, but it's going to be through the kingdom of God in God's people. Amen. He said something to me uh, at when we were having lunch today, and I, I, I got I to gotta steal this from you, brother. I don't know if y'all know this, but Josh is a dealer too. He's a hope dealer. <laughs> he told me that today, and I said, that's good. I like it. And Josh, the hope dealer. Amen. So I, I, I'm just so grateful for those of you who have, have come out to, to be a part of this uh, service tonight. Uh, I'll say this uh, one last thing before we uh, do this next thing. Uh, the Lord began to show me something here, and I began to see this wall right here, uh, and it may be different because it doesn't have to be literally the way we see it, but what I'm saying is I, I see growth coming. And I've seen this wall gone and us uh, extending. We're not about numbers. We're really not. But there's something here that's been cultivated and God's going to begin to add to us and I see us growing. I see this wall may not be this literal wall, but I see us expanding Amen. And, and God adding to this body. Because there's people just like uh, those who are in this room uh, all over that are looking for something more than just another system, than more than just another program. Right. They want to hear from God. They want something tangible. They want yes. something real. And they're tired of going through the motions. And, uh, you know, I want to say this too. We believe in the laying on of hands. Amen. We believe in ministering one to another. Yes. So... And we believe in giving. And we believe in blessing. So don't ever hesitate. If you need prayer, if you need us to lay hands on you, we'll pray with you. Amen. I want to let you know it's confirmation what you said about the church and growing. I just told him that this weekend. I said the church is going to expand and get different. Amen. I didn't know how he was. Amen. He's going to do it. We don't know how, but He's going to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask... Uh, request a song. Yeah, uh, Dana's going to request a song. Uh, and everybody knows it. it's an old hymn.